Hi, I'm Eric Malcolm, and today we are going to talk about using propolis to make tincture and throat spray. I started beekeeping in 2017 as a stay-at-home dad looking for a hobby, but it gets expensive fast. So I started looking for ways to pay for my beekeeping habits, and since I had a sales and marketing background, I figured, oh, this is a great way to share my love for bees with other people and make beekeeping more sustainable for me. So I decided to start my own apiary management business called Backyard Apiaries, which is located in Maryland. So not long after that, I started working for Bee Informed Partnership and the University of Maryland Bee Lab. And at the university, I actually coordinate honey sales and business relations. And at BIP, I coordinate fundraising, outreach, and communications. This presentation will take you through what propolis is and what it's used for. We're also going to touch lightly on ancient history and benefits supported by modern science. And of course, we're going to go over what you'll need to have on hand if you'd like to make propolis tincture and throat spray and how to make them. So what is propolis? Uh, the word propolis was coined by the Greeks, pro meaning for and polis meaning city. Um, ultimately, it's a resin collected from different parts of various plants and common sources are trees in the genus Populus, like cottonwood, aspen, poplars, uh, as well as conifers. So like various pine trees, cedars, spruce, yew. Um, and sometimes when the bees return to the colony, they will mix it with beeswax, um, but not always. So uh, basically, once the resin is in the hive, we refer to it as propolis. And this acts as the honeybee's immune system. So when the colony's sick, the bees will actually go out and gather extra propolis to kick the infection. Uh, typically, it's collected on warm days while the resin are soft and together. Uh, usually your best time for harvesting it is in the autumn. Uh, for more information on, on uh, propolis, definitely check out the University of Minnesota's Bee Lab page. Uh, Dr. Marlis Spivak is, is one of the, the authorities on the topics and has done some amazing research. But uh, propolis is definitely one of the more underutilized products of the hive, and it's getting a lot of momentum. So the research surrounding it is bringing a lot of good public awareness. So what does propolis do? So when the bees gather the resin and return to their hive, their sisters help them remove it from their corbicula, and then it's packed into cracks and openings to cement the hive together, uh, but also to prevent bacteria and fungus from entering the hive. Um, it can also be drawn to reduce spaces to prevent airflow or intruders like mice, snakes, or other small animals. Uh, but propolis is actually loaded with beneficial organic compounds called polyphenols and terpenoids. And these active compounds are how propolis protects the hive and acts as their social immune system. Uh, we'll touch on those in a little bit. But it also gets all over everything we own, which helps keep us bacteria free and fungus free. Just kidding. Or am I? Beekeeping, or the idea of keeping bees around, is believed to be over 10,000 years old. So to the top right, you can see a cave painting of a honey hunter from the Mesolithic era. Uh, this was discovered in the early 1900s in the Araña Caves in Valencia, Spain, that date back to about 8,000 to 6,000 BC. But where the use of propolis's medicine goes pretty far back, based off written record, it's only been used as a remedy since about 380 BC. So as far back as 5,500 BC, ancient Egyptians were using it for embalming their mummies, which has clearly worked. But it's been also suggested that they may have used it for healing and so their, its soothing properties as well, but it's just not clear as far as the timeline on when this started. Between 380 and 350 BC is when the ancient Greeks and Romans first actually wrote about um, using propolis and its benefits. Hippocrates, who was known as the father of Western medicine, used propolis to heal, heal wounds and ulcers, uh, both internal and external, so that's pretty cool. And later, the great Greek philosopher Aristotle used propolis for wound care, and he wrote about this in his book Historia Animalium, or the History of Animals, in ten books. They also used propolis as an antiseptic for oral disinfection and for abscesses. And Roman legionnaires would actually carry propolis in their medical pouches into battle for wound care. But between 101 and 200 AD, ancient Incans were said to actually have used propolis as a disinfectant and antipyretic. Or fever reducer. So there are a lot of ancient cultures that used propolis as medicine, so it's not a real new concept. But, but for the sake of time, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next part of the presentation where we're talking about beneficial properties found by modern science. This graphic shows some of the bioactive compounds of propolis and what the beneficial properties are. 
I adapted this from a scientific article that uh, further breaks down individual polyphenols and terpenoids that are found in propolis. Um, I summarized this and separated them into three groups just for ease of digestion. Uh, the three groups are polyphenols that are not including flavonoids, terpenoids, and then flavonoids. So polyphenols or phenolic compounds are a class of beneficial organic micronutrients that we get through plants. Flavonoids are a subgroup of polyphenols found in fruit, vegetables, grains, pretty much all parts of a plant, and tea and wine. And terpenoids are another large and diverse class of naturally occurring organic chemicals uh, that are derived from terpenes, which provide the aroma and flavor in plants. Uh, they also provide the color to our fruit, and they're also well known for their beneficial effects on health. So due to these properties, propolis is commonly sold as a dietary supplement. Um, however, its use as a drug isn't USDA approved. But now that we know what propolis is and some of the, the benefits of it, now we can look at what is tincture. So tincture is ultimately it's a concentration of plant or animal extract. Uh, it's made by placing various ingredients into 40% or higher alcohol or vinegar and letting them sit uh, after frequent agitation. So for our project, we're going to use a base of ethyl alcohol, which is grain alcohol. Um, do not use isopropyl or rubbing alcohol or methyl wood alcohol. They can kill you or at very best make you really sick. So remember to, to think um, ethyl like in I Love Lucy, not methyl like in Breaking Bad. <laughs> That's a joke. I know it's not methyl. The alcohol acts as a solvent by extracting the active properties of the solids and they can be applied topically or ingested um, and the alcohol in the tincture allows beneficial properties to be absorbed into the body much more quickly so you can enjoy higher concentration of the beneficial properties more quickly than if you just ate the thing on its own um, you can also make tinctures with all sorts of other plants that you find all over the place so uh, as a few examples uh, you'll see there's black walnut is used as an antiseptic and an antiparasitic solution um, echinacea can be used for improving immunity and blood sugar and anxiety and inflammation. Uh, elderberries great for like cold prevention, flu, upper respiratory infections, and um, various herbs. Of course, you can you can use to make different tinctures with a range of benefits. You can even mix them. So in order to make our propolis tincture, we're going to need propolis. So there's three ways that you can collect propolis, and you can use all or or just one of these, depending on what works for you. Uh, the first method anybody can do, it's just using your hive tool and container as you're going through your colony, inspecting, cleaning up frames. Um, just take your scraper, clean up your tacky bits here and there, roll it into a ball, put it to the side until you're finished, wrap up the hive, and then place it in your container. The next is using a propolis trap. Now this, this is a lot easier and it's going to get you a lot more propolis. It looks like a queen excluder, but it's got much smaller slits. Um, the trap is placed underneath of your telescoping cover. And since the bees can't fit through it and there's space behind it, they go ahead and fill it with propolis. So once that's full, you take it out, put it in a bag, put it in your freezer until you're ready to use it. Uh, you can also purchase these through Man Lake, Dadon, Blue Sky, uh, pretty much anywhere, Amazon and prices range from about seven to ten dollars. The third method method is the uh, propolis shelf. This was explained to me by a friend, Zach Lamas, who learned this method from Brazilian beekeepers who used it uh, to harvest green and red propolis. Uh, that's highly studied and valued for its benefits. If you have access to a table saw, you can really easily cut a rabbit along the length of the sides of your hive bodies um, before you assemble them. Um, for those of you who don't know, I've included a graphic showing you what a rabbit cut looks like. It's very familiar to you already. It's the same thing as where your frames are sitting on. It's just going to be running along the, the lengthwise side of your hive. So the bees will fill that space with propolis and then you can scrape it out when you're ready to harvest it. Before we're ready to make our propolis tincture, we have to prepare the propolis. So remember to protect your surface. Uh, propolis stains things, and if it's warm especially, it'll gladly stick to anything and everything. But you already knew that. Gloves are a really good option also if you're going to be working with a lot of it, um, just to keep it from getting underneath your fingernails and things. Um, and I found parchment paper to be like the best thing for surface protection, just because newspaper absorbs liquids, so spills will soak through there and stain your surfaces. Um, first thing we're going to want to have on hand is our raw room temperature propolis. 
Um, usually while you're collecting propolis in the field, it ends up being rolled into a ball and the big propolis balls aren't really the best shape for dissolving. So while it's room temperature, super easy to form into the size that you want to freeze and also easy to clean out like any large debris or bee parts. Um, the thinner it is, the faster it'll freeze and the easier it's going to be to break up into smaller pieces, which are more easily dissolved. So uh, if you're using a propolis trap, you'll want to place it in a large trash bag um, that's unscented, freeze it, and then flex it and like beat it against the counter to uh, release the propolis. And that's going to leave you with a lot smaller pieces, so you won't really need to rework it or worry about the, the previous steps we just discussed. Um, and lastly, it's really good to have things to put the propolis into while you're waiting to prepare your tincture. So um, just to keep it from, from getting on things. So uh, having a baking dish or something lined with parchment handy is really great. Here's the recipe for the propolis tincture for this video. We're going to measure by weight. Uh, you can use anywhere from 10 to 40% propolis to 60 to 90% alcohol. And the higher percentage of propolis you use, the stronger the tincture is going to be. Um, just know that if you use a whole lot of propolis, you may find it either takes a lot longer to dissolve or doesn't all dissolve. Um, to keep things simple, I use a 20% propolis to 80% alcohol or 1 to 4 ratio. Uh, this works great every time and the math is super simple to scale up or down. Since I had already processed most of my propolis prior to filming, um, in this video I'm making a micro batch with 10 grams of propolis and 40 grams of grain alcohol. I weighed my tincture after filtering. Um, there was 24% of the volume in beeswax left over, so I ended up with 1.34 ounces of propolis tincture at the end of that. Um, I've included a breakdown of what you can sell your tincture bottles for. Uh, it sells anywhere between eight and $14 per one ounce bottle. So um, at the base rate of $8 each, uh, you can see the expenses are pretty minimal. Uh, total supply costs are about $41 and all but the dropper bottles will be good for at least two uses. The traps will last for years. Um, also, you use just under half of the 750 milliliter bottle to make 12 ounces of tincture. So only $31 uh, goes towards the total production. To the bottom left, I've also included a gross profit for the 12 pack at both $8 and $14 per 12 pack. So you can see the bottom line, a 12 pack can make you between $65 and $137 after the cost of supplies. Also, just a note, I did not include the costs of labels in this, as label costs vary based on preference and just how you plan to use your tincture. So now we're going to actually look at making the tincture. So with, uh, as, as the previous recipe was showing, we're going to use a, a two parts or 20% propolis to eight parts or 80% uh, grain alcohol. So the first thing we're going to do is weigh out our, we're going to actually tear our canning jar. I'm going to turn that on and just hit the tear button. So that zeroes out here. I've got my, my, uh, cooled and frozen propolis chips that we just uh, tore up there. Put that in there. That is 10 grams. And then we're going to add the 94% grain alcohol. And we're gonna, oh, actually we're gonna tear that first. There we go. And we're gonna do 40 grams. little over but that's okay so next thing we're gonna do is take that put the cap on nice and tight and we're gonna give it a shake now when you're making this at home uh, you want to put it in a store in a cool dry place um, you're gonna have, need to store it for about one to two weeks depending on how much propolis you've got in there um, every day just pop in give it another shake that, uh, that shakes up the propolis and you can actually see it's already starting to, uh, to dilute in the alcohol. So once we do that, once, we, once that process goes on, you're gonna have a layer of wax and any remnants that might have been in the propolis or mixed in with the propolis. Uh, might be bee parts, it might be little blades of grass, it could be anything. But anyways, when you're done, we're gonna then filter that out. So we're gonna cover that in our next step. Next, we're going to filter our settled tincture to, to prepare for bottling. So we'll need an extra container for straining it into. Uh, I use canning jars because they're easy to clean and they don't uh, stain or leach. Um, we'll need a double strainer. So uh, a canning funnel with a paper towel or coffee filter inside to catch uh, finer particles and a tea strainer on top. 
Um, the white funnel here is for transferring the strained um, tincture into the, the squeeze bottle. And I use that for filling the small bottles. Uh, if you can't find one of these, uh, most of the 12 pack dropper packs that you, you buy come with a small funnel in them. We'll also need the dark glass bottles with dropper caps. Um, I use blue tinted cobalt bottles. Um, brown tinted bottles are also available. Uh, the tint protects the tincture against the UV light and helps preserve the beneficial properties. So if you plan to sell your tinctures, you'll also need to follow FDA labeling regulations. So for personal use, I just use uh, like mailing labels. They work great um, just so I don't have unlabeled bottles of alcohol-based tincture floating around. Um, include the title, so propolis tincture, list of ingredients in order of volume, so grain, alcohol, propolis, and a bottled on date is a good idea to have, but it's not necessary. Then you'll put your canning funnel in the mouth of your empty mason jar, put the paper, ta paper towel in it, and the tea strainer goes up on top and pour. Voila, we're ready to bottle. Now that the propolis is fully filtered, we're gonna go ahead and put it in this squeeze jar get ready for bottling and using for making throat sprays. Alright. Cap it up. And now you can squeeze it directly into your, your dropper jars. Little splash there. There you have it. You're ready to use propolis tincture. Mm. The honey propolis throat spay recipe is pretty straightforward. Uh, this is a recipe from Bee Culture Online that I've used for years now and just add peppermint essential oil to. Um, the average going rate for propolis throat spray is eight to $20. And your propolis goes twice as far with this, so it's making up only 50% of the recipe instead of the 100%. Uh, it's measured by volume, so it's in, in parts. I, I did air quotes there. So three parts tincture, two parts honey, one part water. If you're making a 12-pack of one-ounce bottles, you'll use three-quarters cup tincture, half cup of honey, and a quarter cup of water. In this video, I used a total of six tablespoons, which yielded three ounces. And again, to the left is the total volume per ounce of tincture, and the price ranges for each at uh, eight to twenty dollars per bottle. So you can see that, and uh, followed by the gross profit per twelve pack. So the bottom line is a twelve pack can actually make you between sixty-three and two hundred and seven dollars after the cost of supplies. Um, this the supply costs are actually quite similar to the tincture, at forty-two dollars. And for the cost of the tincture, I factored it in at half the cost of making the tincture, since only half the amount of tincture is actually being used in this recipe. Also, for pro, uh, peppermint essential oil, you should definitely use food grade oils. I found a four ounce food grade bottle for $19.99 on Amazon, and that's about 2,000 drops. So that would cover you for about 1,000 bottles or more, depending on how much you're putting in there. So um, that costs about 24 cents per 12 pack, so not, not too much. Again, I did not include the costs for the labels. So now that we've made our propolis tincture, we're going to make a honey th propolis throat spray. So um, this recipe I actually got from uh, Bee Culture Magazine. Uh, they had a nice online article and they had a number of other um, different recipes on there, things you can do with propolis and tincture. So definitely recommend checking that out as well. Um, first though, we're gonna go over what we've got here. So before we get started mixing our throat spray, it's actually quite simple. It's just uh, a couple of ingredients we've got um, warm distilled water, a little bit of local honey, or store-bought honey, however you're, however, whatever you're suited for. Um, we've got our propolis tincture that we just made. And also, um, this is optional, but I do highly recommend it, putting one or two drops of peppermint essential oil uh, in each bottle. That really gives it a nice kick. It's like uh, if any of you guys ever used banaka back in the day. That's what it reminds me of. Anyways, so let's get started. So first thing we're going to do is start with a tablespoon of our warm water. 
drop that right in there. Then we're going to do our two tablespoons or one eighth of a cup of honey. Spatula. Okay. And then we're going to do three tablespoons of our propolis tincture. So that's, we're just going to use one of these and one of, it's going to be all cloudy. Spoon. There we go. We'll mix that up. Just with a handy dandy spatula. You can see it actually turns into a nice, like a milky, kind of a cloudy substance there. And it is delicious. So now we're going to go ahead and pour that into our little spray bottle. Also, if you'll notice, it's a blue cobalt um, container. And that's again just to help protect the, the tincture and the, uh, the insides here from, from ultraviolet light to help preserve it. Now you know everything you need to know to make propolis tincture and throat spray. And I hope you found this information helpful. I want to say thank you to Auburn University and the Alabama Cooperative Extension for inviting me to share with you all today. Also a huge thanks to my wife Kelly Finn for all her help and support during, during this project. Uh, also couldn't give a presentation and not say thank you to my colleagues at Bee Informed Partnership and the University of Maryland Bee Lab. Um, they all work so hard to keep us all updated on the honeybee health trends and bring us data-driven suggestions on better management. And finally, thank you all so much for joining me. I hope this has been helpful. I'm happy to answer any questions now. Likewise, you're welcome to email me at backyardapiaries at gmail.com. Thanks.